Hello everyone, I am the Meditator Kirby, and welcome to my channel, The Commander Tyrant. The Commander Tyrant is a channel dedicated to my favorite Magic the Gathering format. The Brewery is a series on this channel showcasing my spicy brews under the deck text. On this episode of The Brewery, I'll be discussing my take on a commander recently spoiled from Innistrad, Crimson Vow, Toxroll the Corrosive. If you like this deck or any of the cards I'll be mentioning throughout the video, please consider using my TCG Player affiliate link when purchasing those cards. You can find that link down in the description. It'll really help out the channel. The best way you can help support the channel is with my Patreon. For just $1, patrons get early access to certain videos on YouTube. In fact, patrons got a chance to see this video earlier. You can also support my channel for free by simply liking, subscribing, and sharing, which also helps out a lot. You can join my Discord server for free if you want to join the Commander Tavern community. All pertinent links are down in the description. Alright, let's get back to the episode. Toxel is a 7-7 slug horror for 5 generic and 2 black. Since it has an activated ability requiring blue, it has a blue-black color identity. It has 4 abilities, so let's go over them one at a time. The first one is a triggered ability that triggers at the beginning of each end step, not just your own, which is amazing, putting a slime counter on each creature you don't control. This plays with its second ability, which is a static ability, giving minus 1 minus 1 to each creature you don't control for each slime counter it has. This plays with its third ability, which is a triggered ability that triggers whenever a creature you don't control with a slime counter on it dies. When that happens, you create a 1-1 black slug creature token, which, as you might have guessed by now, plays with its final ability, an activated ability that requires one blue and one black, plus sacrificing a slug to draw a card. Being a two-colored 7-7 commander with four abilities opens the door to a lot of possible interactions when it comes to brewing with Toxtril, so this is just my take on it. If it weren't evident by now, I love Aristocrat and Edict effects, so that was the avenue I went with Toxtril. Not only because these archetypes synergize so well with it, but because the deck can also run well enough between them independently of Toxtril. That's because this slug is a horror just by its casting cost alone. That being said, I wanted to maximize its effects as much as possible. Blade of the Blood Chief was one of the first cards I considered and it does so much work here. Toxtril is already a 3 turn clock but it has no evasion. But if it is constantly killing off all the creatures on the board, nothing will stick around long enough to block it. Having this equipped to it makes it potentially end an opponent with one hit. The counters add up very fast. Next up are Gissa Glorious Resurrector and Grave Betrayal. If we're killing off our opponent's creatures once Toxtril hits the battlefield, stealing them is another way to almost guarantee our victory. Toxtril being so expensive to cast means that we can prepare our board beforehand. Just one turn without being answered already kills anything with toughness 3 or less, but we have ways of accelerating that a bit, one of them being Pestilence. If opponent's creatures are weak enough but not yet dead, dealing 1 damage to the entire board 1 black mana at a time will definitely do the trick to finish them off without such a huge investment in mana. Clackbitch Troll, Dowsing Dagger, Hunted Phantasm, Hunted Horror, and Forbidden Orchard are included because sometimes we might become too efficient at wiping the board and we want some more value from our effects. Each of these give opponents creatures. It might seem counterintuitive, especially since we'd preferably want a clear board to connect with Dowsing Dagger and transform it into Lost Veil, an amazing land to help cast Toxwell in the first place, but these effects just give the opponents with weak creatures. The point is to give them creatures that'll die right away when Toxwell triggers. Then we can continue taking advantage of those deaths. In fact, the Cormus Bell and Urborg to move Yawgmoth combo can also help give opponents creatures in a sense that it'll turn all their lands into 1 1 swamp creatures. Not only will one end step after Troxel hits the battlefield be enough to wipe all of our opponent's lands, but it'll also provide an insane amount of death triggers. For Sir Conrad the Grim, Blood Artist, and Zillaport Cutthroat especially. These are some classic pieces that do a ton of work in this deck. Creatures are dying left and right, even our own when it comes time to use our slugs for value and or sacrifice fodder. Death by a thousand cuts can get the job done, but these become even more brutal once Toxel's on the battlefield. Pitiless Plunderer and Black Market as well, even though the pirate only triggers when our own creatures die. But Black Market is amazing for longer games as well, since it'll be getting tons of counters which help us recast Toxel a couple of times from the command zone should we need to do so. While a lot of the cards previously mentioned work well on their own, they're even better with Toxel, as I also mentioned. However, we can also take advantage of Toxel's other abilities. Once we're killing off creatures and getting slug tokens, we can sacrifice these for value to their progenitor. Having either Species Specialist, Dark Prophecy, Erebos, Bleak Hearted, Kells, Fight Fixer, or Liliana Dreadhorde General on the board when we do, gives us even more value from them. Kells is the only one who doesn't trigger for free, since we need to play one blue-black hybrid mana, but at least she also has a built-in sacrifice ability, which is great for when we don't have Toxel. Same with Erebos. Species Specialist needs for us to name Slug when it enters the battlefield, which is still a very niche creature type, but soon enough we'll see how we can take advantage of even that. Ileana is also an amazing planeswalker in her own right, with all of her loyalty abilities being relevant to the deck. Skull Clamp is especially an amazing card in the deck since the Slug tokens are 1 1s. If Toxel is taken care of, no matter. For just one generic mana, we can equip this to a Slug token and draw two cards. It's pretty apparent how broken this equipment is in token decks. 
Ashton's Altar and Phyrexian Altar are some more sacrifice outlets for our slugs in order to turn them into mana acceleration. We won't draw a card off of them unless we had any of them previously mentioned effects on the board too, but at least every creature dying with a slime counter on it has Toxtrol give us tokens that can be sacrificed for mana acceleration, especially when it comes to recasting Toxtrol from the command zone. Best of all, Dictate of Erebos and Grave Pact are some more cards that benefit from all these interactions. On their own, they're amazing, but you get some interesting interactions with Toxtrol. If each creature already has a slime counter on it, then when we trigger these, each opponent will have to sacrifice a creature having a slime counter on it, triggering Toxtrol, giving us more slugs. Slugs that can then be sacrificed to once again trigger these effects. So these can even help clear the board of creatures even faster. I just love these enchantments. Speaking of clearing the board faster, how about we just straight up speed up how often the slime counters are placed on creatures. Guild Pact Informant, Thrumming Bird, and a creature equipped with Sword of Truth and Justice hitting an opponent allow us to proliferate. Having Invasion and Protection means that the likelihood of being able to hit an opponent is not low. The sword has the added bonus of giving a plus one plus one counter to one of our creatures, so I suggest doing it to Toxtrol to get that commander damage win that much faster. Viral Drake, Yawgmoth, Thran Physician, Contagion Clasp, Contagion Engine, and Karn's Bastion can also help with this, albeit much better since they're activated and not triggered. The first two especially since they could potentially be activated multiple times in a turn, at instant speed no less, so long as you can pay for the abilities. Contagion Engine is especially epic since it proliferates twice per activation, which is nothing to scoff at. Inexorable Tide also gets the job done and does so each time we cast a spell. This might seem a bit slow, but even one or two spells per turn is enough, and it requires no investment in mana beyond being cast. While these cards aren't as good on their own since they're meant to, more to synergize with Toxtrol itself, Lithoform Engine and Strionic Resonator also synergize with Toxtrol, but are amazing on their own. These don't necessarily proliferate like the previous cards, but if you activate them while Toxtrol's Slime Counter ability is on the stack, you can copy it and give each creature two Slime Counters instead of one. And they're still useful on their own too, which is just as important. Other ways of making the most out of Toxtrol's abilities is with Masculine Nexus. Granted, this won't really do much apart from making all of our creatures be slugs, but that can still help with at least Species Specialist when you name Slug as a creature type. However, with Toxtrol, you can then sacrifice any creature to get the card draw, which is great for when you run out of slugs to sacrifice. Same with Kindred Discovery. This works amazingly with Toxtrol or with Maskwood Nexus. If all of our creatures are slugs, then each time any of them enter the battlefield, you draw a card. Once you have Toxtrol online and creatures start dying, this enchantment draws us into a ton of cards. So much so that Thought Vessel and Reliquary Tower are included for good measure. Neither of these cards really take up a slot in the deck, but once we start drawing a ton of cards, we'll be glad we had them. Coat of Arms is another game-ending card in the deck. If you want your slugs to have a purpose higher than just sacrifice fodder, then you can grow them and then smack the opponents for huge chunks of life. These tokens will also then pump Toxtrol too, allowing for a faster commanded damage one-shot kill as well. Or with Massive Nexus, pump all of your creatures to insane amounts and then alpha strike the table to oblivion. Again, these effects aren't that good on their own without Toxtrol, but that doesn't mean they're entirely useless without Toxtrol, which is important. One main reason we don't want to depend too heavily on our commander is what I mentioned earlier. It costs 7 mana to cast the first time, and even then it's going to need protecting. Or some 1 or 2 mana kill spells is going to set you back another 9 mana. That's why we're obviously running Swiftfoot Boots, Lightning Greaves, Commander's Play, and Champion's Helm. If ever a deck needed running these commander protectors, it's one with a 7 costed commander that'll strike fear into the table the moment you successfully cast it. Keep in mind that this makes your commander cost 7, plus whatever mana is needed to equip whichever of these to it. Same with Pact of Negation, Force of Negation, Fierce Guardianship, Swan Song, Negate, Counterspell, and Mana Drain. Casting Toxtrol with enough mana open to cast any of these to protect it is a given. Fortunately, these also work well on their own to protect our board state or to stop an opponent from comboing off. But Toxtrol needs protecting, so at least keep one in hand for that. If Toxtrol did bite the dust, Hawkins National Laboratory can help with that. Before casting Toxtrol, you can stock up on some clues. Then if it dies and you'd rather send it to the graveyard, you can then activate this land that doesn't take up a slot in your deck to transform it into the Upside Down. Once you do, you reanimate Toxtrol via something flavorful. If the Stranger Things Secret Lair isn't for you, then just wait until its MTG IP version gets reprinted in Streets of Nukapenna. As for our own interaction, Cyclonic Rift is a given. We don't have to worry that much about creatures, even those with indestructible, protection, hexproof, or shroud, but pesky permanents like artifacts and enchantments might be a problem. So just bounce everything and be done with it. Mystic Sanctuary is another response piece that doesn't take up a slot in the deck. More often than not, this will enter untapped and with the deck's fetch lands we can try and get it if we really did need to recover that protective instant from our graveyard. 
As for helping alleviate that 7 mana cost, Jewel Lotus and Dark Ritual do a good job by getting it a bit faster. Unfortunately, a turn 1 talk show requires more than just a land and these two cards, but at least either of these gets it out a couple of turns faster. Same with Bubbling Muck. The deck is mostly black, which is why High Tide is not included, even though you could include it if you wanted to for your own deck. Keep in mind that the deck is running Urbrook Tomb of Yawgmoth, which gives Bubbling Muck a ton of mileage, not so much so High Tide. Same with Lake of the Dead, Cabal Coffers, Cabal Stronghold, and Nyctos Shrine to Nyx. Having all of our lands be swamps does wonders with Lake of the Dead and Cabal Coffers, but Cabal Stronghold only works with basic swamps. However, don't fret, because the Stronghold will count those basic islands that are also swamps thanks to Orborg. So it's not so bad. I just love Orborg Tomb of Yawgmoth. So do Magus of the Coffers, Crypt Gas, and Nirkana Revenant. These allow us to generate a ton of mana to not only power the deck, but to also help cast Toxel multiple times a game if it came to that. The Gas and Revenant also have other abilities as a bonus, which make them even better than glorified mana acceleration pieces. Same with Kyrick, Son of Yawgmoth. Thanks to Kyrick, Toxel only costs 5 generic. It might not seem like a lot, but as I mentioned earlier, the deck is mostly black, so being able to use our life force as a resource is about as black as it goes in terms of color pie philosophy. Liliana of the Dark Realms, Burnished Heart, Sword of the Animus, and Sword of Hearth and Home also help accelerate our mana via mana-based ramp. Liliana doesn't put the swamp directly onto the battlefield, but she does help us never miss a land drop. And they don't have to be basic swamps either. We can get any of the 5 double type swamps of the deck. Her second ability can also help Toxio potentially one-shot an opponent. Her emblem is just crazy here, making our swamps tap for quadruple black. She's so good in this deck. The swords not only help in the early game, but can then be used to pump Toxio or protect him in the case of Sword of Hearth and Home. Mana Crypt, Mana Vault, Soul Ring, and Arcane Signet are included since they are early mana acceleration. Black doesn't need that much help in mana acceleration, but these, along with Jewel Lotus and Dark Ritual, have the potential of getting us a turn 1 Tox Rope. Just be careful with early game spot removal. The rest of the deck is just the rest of the lands. The deck's running all 7 fetch lands, Underground Sea, Watery Grave, Sunken Hollow, Feeded Pools, Ice Tunnel, Drowned Catacomb, Tainted Isle, Sunken Ruins, Command Tower, and Ancient Tomb, as well as 5 of each basic land to make the most out of the ramp effects. As with all of my deck techs, you don't need to run the more expensive mana acceleration pieces like Jewel Lotus, Mana Crypt, Mana Vault, Lake of the Dead, Ancient Tomb, etc. if you don't already have them, won't proxy them, or aren't playing online. You can very easily swap them out for budget substitutes and the deck will still run well enough. This brew is just an idea of how to build around Toxel the Corrosive. I wanted to try and play with all of Toxel's abilities in my deck. Not just how easily it can wipe the board, but also the fact that it creates slugs and can sacrifice them for value. I also wanted to take advantage of it being 7-7. Fortunately, in these colors, the deck isn't all over the place and the pieces do well work together as well as without Toxel, albeit some more than others. That being said, the deck is a lot of fun to play, but do keep in mind that opponents might fear Toxel when it comes time to cast it, so they might save their responses for when you do, since it's so expensive to cast. They don't have the time to save their interaction. Fortunately, the deck can still play well without Toxel, so you don't have to worry too much about that. If you're interested in the deck list of the Spicy Brew of Mine, you can find a link to it down in the description. I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me, and a quick shout out to all my higher tier patrons, the Brewers, for their patronage. I'd also like to thank anyone using my TCG Player affiliate link, that also helps out the channel. And to everyone, thanks for watching this episode of The Brewery on the Commander Tavern. I'm Bennett Kirby, and happy brewing!